You're going to be seeing a lot of this face in this video, so get used to it. But regardless, when it comes to top 10s, I uh, definitely haven't been uploading them as promised. So to make it flat, I'm going to have a top 10 every single day this week. Yes, not every other day. I'm not misspeaking this time around. I actually mean that there is a top 10 coming out every single day, purely because at this moment in time, I can actually manage it. Before when I made that promise, it was right in the middle of me moving between my university accommodation and my house which I, as you can clearly see i'm at right now so that's where the struggle came in beforehand but now that i'm here and everything is moved and the stress has been taken off my shoulders uh, that is why getting a top 10 every single day is more of a possibility for me regardless i'm a person who loves himself a good trilogy lord of the rings how train your dragon shrek oh wait that's not a trilogy and the third one wasn't any good anyway <laughs> but pushing all those aside being such a huge fan of trilogies i have two videos on the channel dedicated to why certain scarlets are awesome one for igniter and one for smolder dash since those are my two favorite scarlets of all time so naturally there are at the very minimum 10 reasons behind their absolute unrivaled awesomeness for the most part there is one scarlet my third favorite scarlet of all time that almost rivals the awesomeness of these characters and that brings us to what's going to conclude this here trilogy of top tens uh, ranking 10 reasons why certain scarlets are awesome and the scarlet in the left right and center of this video is going to be drobot he's going to be our focus this here video because with him being my third favorite scarlet of course there are 10 reasons behind his awesomeness that i could find and categorize into an awfully passionate list of my own so without further ado let's get into it once the intro has played itself out <laughs> as to why Drobot is awesome we're going to take a look back into his introduction into the franchise which involves the figurine uh, before you which those of you who are paying close attention to would notice that he possesses a green base he's one of 32 scarters of the entire cast to possess this base which gives him a very unique and a uh, prestigious honour amongst um, the Skarners cast, which only 31 fellow Skarners share alongside him, which means that he is one of 19% of the entire Skarners cast that was not only introduced in Spyro's Adventure, but also capable of being played in any Skarners game. That's right, only 19% of the characters of the entirety of the franchise still hold up that honor to this day the honor in which you can boot up any of these games you wish and still be able to play as for scarner at hand and i for one think that's awesome so therefore drobot having been introduced in spiral's adventure and maintaining his awesomeness six games in a row is truly what makes drobot a huge standout amongst the crowd like seriously if that statistic of 19 percent just showcases how limited and um exclusive this honor is so to say for number nine we have the fact that drobot's mini is not only badass as he carries over everything that makes the original drobot so great but it's the fact that his mini looks so cute whilst doing it you know you're awesome when you can have a baby form that's still as awesome as this. The design translates over very well to make for a cute yet threatening um, character that you just really want to cuddle in your arms and at the same time maintain your distance because if you were in a fight against uh, this character, even though it's a mini still, you would stand no chance, mind you, and that's where the gloriousness of Drobit comes in. What an awesome mini amongst the cutest of the entire cast, and that alone is what makes Drobot and his several counterparts so awesome. 
Coming in at number eight, we have his unique backstory. But when it comes to Drobot, he's no Mary Sue. Several other Skylanders have a generic played by the beats backstory where they just use their powers, which they're shunned for by the rest of their kind, in order to save their kind from an evil force. But Drobot has none of that. He didn't start off with any superpowers, and instead, he used his intelligence and resourcefulness to build himself a suit of armor to escape a deserted island. I mean, it definitely gives me major Iron Man vibes, but I have no problems with that whatsoever. And the fact that because of this backstory's natural uniqueness, it really makes Drobot stand out from a character standpoint, since this backstory really does build upon this character's personality, and it just makes him so incredibly awesome. The idea that when you play the Skarner, you're playing as a Skarner that uses intelligence and resourcefulness on top of his weaponry to outsmart and destroy his enemies. No, he just more than destroyed them. He annihilates them. If we take a moment and just watch Drobot's uh, idle animations here, as well as listen to the sound of his voice, you will notice not only its uniqueness, he has a completely unique robotic sound to his voice, which makes him so intimidating and most importantly of all, full to the brim with personality, which is also brought out by those idle animations. So, in other words, this character is so full of personality and detail from the developer's uh, efforts and passion in bringing this Skarner to life from its translation between the figurine to the game. It's an incredible translation at that, which brings about such incredible personality, making Drobot unique and so awesome uh, to play as, because in the moment you're there annihilating your enemies and all of a sudden you hear a deep, intimidating robotic voice and it makes you feel like such a badass. So that personality really expressing Drobot further as a character and just really presenting the passion in which the developers put into the creation of this character as well as just that personality uh, bringing about those positive feelings within you as you play with this character is ultimately, uh, is ultimately even what makes him so awesome in my books. If you guys detected a slight hint of Iron Man in the backstory of this here masterpiece of a character then you definitely won't be alone because his backstory reminds me of Iron Man also, but Iron Man isn't the only clever intertextual element of Drobot because Drobot's voice, as we just heard, sounds a lot like Decepticon sound, uh, Soundwave even, which just so happens to be my favourite Decepticon of the Transformers franchise. So naturally that makes Drobot an amalgamation of things I love and the fact that Drobot can remind me of those things through his subtle intertextuality and references is again what makes him so incredibly awesome because awesome characters remind me of awesome things and that's exactly what Drobot nails and it naturally I cannot fault something which reminds me of what I love so Drobot being such an intertextual demon and so clever uh, how it's all built up and summarized within the embodiment of a single figure is what makes him so awesome all the same. Man, it sure is a good thing that you guys aren't doing a drinking game right now where you drink every single time you say awesome in this video, otherwise uh, you'll definitely have a huge hospital bill, to say the least. For number five, we're just going to take a look at Drobot speeding capabilities right here. We have ourselves an afterburner, which first of all brings out the glitches and trap team, and glitches and trap team are indeed quite glorious, so right off the bat, Drobot's awesome on a glitch standpoint. You know, for the game is just so much of a fan of Drobot that is so uh, overexcited for me to be playing this in right now that is causing it to overheat and glitch out, so to say, from excitement. But all glitches aside, you will uh, very quickly notice Drobot's speeder and in prowess. And that's because, you know, not only does he have fast maneuverability with these afterburners right here, but he's also incredibly powerful. He can just sweep through hordes and hordes of enemies, no problem, especially with the help of his surroundings as he utilizes his resources through his advantage, as we um, alluded to with, of course, the previous points of the top 10. And so just look at this, he has that maneuverability, the speed, the fact that he can take down enemies uh, with ease. 
all of these is what makes this character so fast-paced, so that makes him a really fun character to play as. And, of course, you're going to have an absolute blast speedrunning as him with the absolute destruction you're going to feel at the, hand, uh, at the helm of your fingertips. He is a speedrunning demon to be feared, um, especially by his enemies. So, naturally, the fast-pacedness of the Scar makes him incredibly fun, and his effectiveness in speedrunning makes him a very viable option for anyone looking to get into speedrunning in this game, though I must admit the speedrunning portion of this level definitely weird thin with the uh, dialogue, not even Drobot himself seems to be able to skip. But the afterburners on the other hand, they uh, are, as you can tell, very effective and very maneuverable too. You never really um, lose your lack of direction, so that's again what adds to the pacing and the momentum of this character. So you never really feel like you're going slow with this character, you never become stalled to players, and as a speedrunner, you're constantly moving uh, forward, and that uh, just ties back to him being so effective all the same. So now we're going to cut off the gameplay right after the uh, well, just cut scene right here, because that is what we call convenient timing all the same. So far on the list, we've only seen two different iterations of Drobot, and whilst these two figurines are most certainly awesome, they're not all what Drobot has to offer, because he also, from Giants, received a legendary form, as well as a reposed Series 2 iteration. So as you can tell with all of these uh, figurines on display, they look incredibly uniform, and neat these figurines are beyond impressive at this point beyond even for near might of the word awesome there is not a single word in the english dictionary that summarizes how detailed and how cool these figurines are to look at sure the light core effect isn't the greatest for little button on his back here many lights up and it's a small glow at best but the pose in itself is still spectacular, with his tail curling round, that looks incredibly cool. Um, and then of course Series 1 Drobot with his pour up, uh, really allowing for the contrasts between the green and the brown tones of his skin to be highlighted. But the true Asta La Vie stance of these figurines has to be the Series 2 version because look at how much detail it is able to cram into this compacted space. We have Drobot's little arch running over his head within a massive blade that's held by his wings and in the middle of the blade has his tail seeping right through it. Man, this figurine is so detailed. It looks so cool. The moulding on it is so clever and very, very well designed. It's... By far one of the greatest reposes we've ever seen from Scarlet. It justifies the reincarnation of this character. And better yet, it's a rather rare and elusive character, just like my uh, custom Drobot, which very few people possess. It's just that rare, mind you. And it goes to show that Drobot's figurine, even without a wing, is awesome. But moving back to the Series 2 Drobot, which is the design we'll be focusing on for the rest of this uh, list, just because, man, it is detailed, and it was definitely worth importing from America, because this character was so awesome that uh, Activision didn't release it in Europe in fear that it would expose us to too much raw awesomeness. Now, I told you previously that this is the version of the data design even that we will be focusing on throughout the rest of this video. And note how I said design when opening up about this point, because without the incredible design, they wouldn't have had this much range of expanding upon it with this Series 2. The reason why this Series 2 works so well is because they was able to take the base design of Drobot and just incorporate so many details in it to make this a distinctive and unique repose. Without that base design, all of the elements that we've seen on the list so far wouldn't work. The fact that he is a dragon with a souped-up armour to have that intertextuality with Iron Man and Soundwave is all brought about through the incredible design that blends dragon and machine. And I love dragons, they're my favourite mythological creatures. So seeing one blended with a robot is really badass, really unique, and... The word of the day describes it perfectly. It's awesome is what it is. And thanks to this design working so well, every single other thing on this list can work so well also. It's such a great uniformality to the character. 
that they started off with an amazing design and managed to expand upon that and give us so many awesome things about a singular character. Ten things, in fact. Ten reasons why he is as awesome as he is. Oh, wow, we're back here with a completely different version of Drobot. But, hey, I have been recording this uh, top ten in bulk right here, so that's why this is continuing on from where the previous gameplay segment left off. But regardless, it's time to put the filler out of the way because we're going to be heading into his upgrade chamber so I can show you um, with visualization what our next point will cover. The fact that Drewbot here is broken. He's an absolute beast in combat to be reckoned with, which is what makes him such an effective speedrunner for the fact that he can take down his enemies with such ease. But that's brought about by an excellent upgrade chamber, which uh, makes your lasers faster higher in quantity as you can tell right here we have uh lasers that are sh shot out of the eyes and the wings that also explode on contact so yes these lasers are fast they are accurate they deal a lot of damage they are speedy and high in quantity so basically everything that goes into making a scanner op can be found with this character through this upgrade chamber even right out of the box however drobot is still incredibly broken because he still possesses his saw blades to deal huge chunks of damage and his lasers still start off at that incredible fire rate and just seem to keep on getting better and better so the evolution within this upgrade chamber is very well designed and he has some incredible artwork to go alongside all of that like seriously look and these pieces of art as I go through the upgrade chamber right here, it's incredible. But regardless, I've swapped out with the Series 2 Drobot here in particular because that grants us access to his WoW Power ability. Which, if he wasn't broken before, he certainly is now. Watch this ability in motion. And you can create a mega buzzsaw that can absolutely annihilate his way through enemies and it's completely controllable. And then after it's done, it sends for two blades that... Uh, work conca concatenated together to create that blade in the first place which is so incredibly broken it's like you know having your cake and eating it too so Drobot is incredibly broken um, from a gameplay standpoint when you're playing through the story mode and he makes for an excellent uh, beginner's character going uh, forward into these games. Say you have a younger sibling who's definitely not as good at video games as you are and you don't want them losing all of your scars because you're after that no lives lost objective. Well you simply give them Drobot and they will have a much easier time and they, will, uh, they themselves will be having more fun because they will feel the might and the power of this character's moveset. And it also makes him an absolute beast in PvP. He wipes the floor with most of the Skardas, and it's so much fun to just annihilate all of the Skardas in your path in PvP. Now, the main problem with this is that it's a little less fun to be on the receiving end of Drobot's annihilation. But, you know, that's the same situation with any multiplayer experience. There's nothing unique to Drobot, so naturally his fun is carried over no matter what mode you're playing as because he is so broken. He's a perfect beginner's character, and he's a perfect character to give to your siblings so you can avoid the frustration of your annoying younger siblings losing all of your scars in combat. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just feed bad juju just as a final proving of my point as to not only the speedrunning prowess of a character but also just how broken this moveset of his is and how it is notoriously one of the best that any Skarner has to offer with the range, the speed and the fire rate that it covers. Like seriously, I'm just sweet, uh, sweeping the floor of these guys. I almost feel sorry for their complete and utter um, annihilation right now but almost doesn't quite count now does it? So yeah, let's finish them off with the afterburners. Even when these guys get close, we can use the afterburners not only deal a huge chunk of damage, but also knock them back. Yeah, these guys are basically dead before they get within a mile's worth of Drobot's uh, vicinity. He has such great range, speed, and power. I truly cannot emphasize that enough. And as always, there is not a single word in the English dictionary to summarize this guy's true awesomeness. I'm that passionate and that uh, pleased with this character, to that extent, you could go as far as to sing. Okay, let's use our mega wow power blade right here. Boom, and then finish them off by bringing in even more blades, and then we can fire them off backwards whilst we run away from our enemies with afterburners. You seriously have attacks that cover all fronts with this character. Enemies can't approach you from behind, they can't approach you from the front. 
if the enemies see you, they are basically doomed. If enemies could rage quit this game, they most certainly would from the moment they see Drobot approaching. And Drobot, simply put, does not allow the enemies to play the video game. And that's why I almost feel sorry for him. Almost. Okay, here we go. Let's finish off these dudes right here with uh, the most broken scander of the game. You wouldn't expect that from a character that does 36 damage per hit. But with how fast that 36 damage accumulates, you can see where this character gets all of his overpoweredness from. So now we're going to be defeating Bad Juju and doing exactly what I alluded to doing at the beginning of the clip, mind you. And I couldn't be more happier to do it. I'm feeling just such a huge sense of destruction and power, and I'm so glad that I am the one controlling it all. And of course, Drobo's one-liners and his personality, as we've talked about in previous uh, points, is what has uh, just added to that fun and the raw sense of power I'm feeling whilst playing this character right now. He wouldn't be nearly as fun if it wasn't for the intimidating and unique personality of his, brought about by his voice and his animations. I'm just reinforcing previous points at this point, and that's a, a lot of a word point uh, utilised in this single sentence right there. If only there was an award for saying the same word over and over again. And expecting a different sort, because that isn't the dictionary definition of insanity or anything. So yeah, let's just finish this combat scenario and then we can move on to the final reason as to why this card is as awesome as he is. Yeah, that's right, I've been building it up and I've been building it up. But for now we need to take, take care of this eyeball dragon. Which, you know, normally it's a problem. <laughs> not for Drobot, is not. Just look at this. Wow. Just, just wow. Time for me to cut on the enemy's defeat right there. Oh boy, it seems as though we're back with my face for the end of this here video. But regardless, uh, for this final point, we're going to focus upon uh, Drobot's main iterations, which of course would be his Series 1 and his Series 2. Shoot, this is the broken one. Anyway... Drobot is one of the few Skarners which is universally beloved. You cannot go to a single SkyTuber's channel and find someone there who doesn't like Drobot. Whether it's um, their expression of their top 10 characters that Drobot frequently finds himself included in. Or you can scroll down the comment sections and no one will ever be mad about Drobot receiving high praise just because he's... One of those few scandals that the community can come together and share an equal love for. Not a single person I know of has a dislike or a distaste for this character. And that amount of universality makes Drobot being awesome beyond an opinion at this point. With how much love this character gets on a universal scale, his awesomeness is practically fact. And to be frank, I could not blame anyone who loves this character as much as me. This list is ever-living proof of his awesomeness. And it shall stand the test of time, as there is no way my opinion will ever change on Drobot, because he will shall ever remain, to this day and into the far future, an awesome Skylanders character. But that's going to do it for this here Top 10 video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I will, of course, be seeing you tomorrow for the next Top 10 video. But until that moment arises, peace.